Okay, we are indeed live, and I misspelled my name. <laughs> no, I saw that. I should spell my name. Sorry. <laughs> Thanks for uh, the heads up there, Rifkin. Yeah, I, I, well, I saw it, and then I'm like, <sighs> brain <laughs> I'm sorry about that. Um, okay. anyway, <laughs> are you going to do the introduction of Shaxi, or am I going to do it? Uh, hi, welcome to the sisters interview. We're back. <laughs> we took a little uh, month off. Uh, and it seemed like both forever and a uh, very short amount of time. Um, and uh, contrary to our hopes that the pandemic would be winding down, we seem to be ramping back up. Um, so we are indeed back uh, because I have a feeling that, you know, not a lot of events are going to be happening, at least not in Ontario. So um, here we are. <laughs> Hi, everyone. <laughs> Hi, yay. <laughs> oh, I spilled water down my shirt, too. Awesome. <laughs> cool. So uh, I'm just going to hide that. So our first guest back is our good friend, Susanna. Hi. Um, Susanna started out in the middle sort kingdom, of. sort of. So she's going to talk about that. Um, but she's in Ontier now, and um, she is an incredibly talented artist in addition to uh, being a formidable fighter. So um, welcome, Susanna. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks for having me, asking me on. Thanks for being brave with us. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll settle into a rhythm here in a, in a minute and just uh, get little, back to it jitters. A little yeah. squirrely. Um, so we usually start off by asking you how you found the SCA and what made you fall in love with it? Um, I started by doing Ren fairs when I was in like high school shortly thereafter. Um, and then I moved where there were none and there was a SCA group. Um, so that was in Western Seas in Kaid and I found them. They were very nice, very welcoming. Um, and then moved to the Middle Kingdom shortly after getting involved. And that's where I spent a large chunk of my SCA time. Um, and now I'm here. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> you, you found the SCA in Hawaii? Yeah. Wow. So, okay. So one of the questions I wanted to ask you, and I'll just jump to it, is um, the sort of inner kingdom differences. Um, mm -hmm. So, how was it different besides, you know, aging and being more invested, um, playing in Kaid to playing in the middle to playing in Ontier? Um, Western Seas was its own thing. Uh, so I don't, I can't really speak to all of Kaid because I wasn't super involved at the time. We did, I mean, hyper local events, which was great. It was a great introduction sort of um, because everybody knew each other because it was a really close group. Um, but I didn't really get a sense of like the wider kingdom culture. Um, like we were doing baronial court in our friend's backyard who was barren. So like, and like, it was a group of like 15 people who all are just there having fun and nerding out about history. Um, so it was a blast. And then it was a shock to move to the middle kingdom um, because then I was in Chicago area and there are a lot of people and I truly got more of the like SCA experience um, rather than this is my small nerdy group of friends. <laughs> um, and, but it was good. I really liked being out there. The people were super nice, um, sort of aggressively friendly. Um, and then uh, moving out here, there is a, like I could, I know more differences between the two kingdoms, between Middle and Ontier. I love them both. Um, Ontier has a lot more court than I was used to. That was a definite shock when I moved here. Um, I was not familiar with just court events where that was what you did, um, but it's fun. I like it a lot here. Uh, there's a big difference in sort of the fighting culture where out there it's definitely more melee focused. Um, and here it's more tournament focused, uh, but both are good. I'm, I like both, but I like tournaments in a lot of ways better. So that's kind of nice, but I do miss some of the like, um, 
just sort of the group feeling on the field out there because we did practice more melee stuff. Like I moved here and one of the first events I was like, hey, what's our recall? And they're like, our what? And then everybody just like went in opposite directions. <laughs> I'm like, all right, cool. So that's what it is. Um, <laughs> you, should, you should teach us recall. <laughs> I've tried, but no one listens, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> I will but yes. facilitate some listening. I am a small person who tends to do sword and shield, and I really, really need a buddy on the field. So I'm a fan. <laughs> um, <clears throat> about what, how long ago did you start in Western Seas? Um, I was looking at pictures and shocked it was just over 10 years ago now. Okay. Um, and how long were you there? A couple of years, but I didn't get really involved at first and then it was sort of like a slow, slow start. Mm -hmm. um, especially a lot of people out there were, it was mainly fighting focused. And at that time I wasn't. Um, so I wasn't quite as involved but I was getting there towards the end and then started fighting there and then did the bulk of, hmm? I was, I was gonna say, what, what was it that, that brought you in? What, what activity? Um, I originally was really interested in the costuming. That's what I did with the Ren Fair. And uh, there too, we were doing like stage fighting, which was a lot of fun. And I knew that SCA did rapier so I was, I thought I was going to be a rapier fighter. Um, and there was no rapier in Western Seas uh, at the time when I was there, like everybody was doing, they weren't anti-rapier, it's just a small group. And the few people were there, they fought armored. Um, so eventually I got bored of watching them. Like I wanted to do it, but I didn't really have the guts to say I wanted to do it. And finally I got bored enough that that sort of overrode the, the fear of saying I was interested. Um, and they were great and got me into armor and gave me loner gear and uh, taught me stuff. And then when I moved to uh, Illinois, um, I stuck with it because I loved it. And I did do some rapier there too, because there, there was a really good group out there that did rapier. Um, but it was a lot to try and do both. And so I ended up sticking with armored. Not that I wouldn't, but just time-wise. I, I get that. But it's, it's, <laughs> I, um, I'm always blown away by people that can do it all. Um, Me too. I just don't know how they um, they dedicate their time to it all. Yeah. And out there, the practice was at the same time too, like at the same time, same place. So technically you could like quit halfway through and swap, but you're not getting as much in either. So or alternate weeks or something, but right. still, it's a lot. It is a lot. And I was not, I didn't have any like athletic ability when I started this. So if I was going to get any of that, I needed to focus. Um, and I didn't have the patience to be slow in two things. <laughs> I get that. Did you have uh, particular people at, in Western Seas that mentored you and, and kind of uh, helped you along? Or was it just the group in general? Um, it was the group. Um, Keith and Laura, whose SCA names I'm totally blanking on, and I'm very sorry. Um, they were great. They were they were really active and helped uh, get me involved. Um, and I don't remember anybody's SCA name right now. Uh, but Kino <laughs> and Carrie were great. Um, uh, Clyde is also not his SCA name, but he was big into um, the Tycho drumming, which was super cool. Um, and he was the only knight there for a while, and then. Uh, chemo and uh, chemo got knighted while I was still there, um, which was funny because uh, he really, really wanted to be squired to Clyde, who didn't have enough time. And so he kept saying, no, 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 no. And then Clyde decided he would. And that's when the king said that he wanted to knight chemo. <laughs> 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 yeah. But it was fun. It was a good group. It was. So, um, yeah. And, and did you, were you able to jump in right away when you moved to Illinois or was there kind of a, a, another period of kind of 
Um, I jumped in right away, but intentionally, because uh, I've moved enough to know that the first bit really sucks and I just needed to do it. Um, and I knew that I was, I wanted to be involved. Um, and when I showed up to practice there the first time, like people were super nice. They threw loaner gear at me. They helped me armor up. Um, everybody was really welcoming. How long did it take you to get into your own armor to get your own kit together? Um, I got a terrible kit together really quickly. <laughs> Uh, cause I don't, I didn't fit the loaner gear very well. Um, and the loaner gear was old hockey gear that got sweat in and then shoved in a bag and then never aired out. So yeah, I like, I know it just from your description, yep. right, right. Like you would take a shower and still be smelly afterwards. And so I had a friend there, um, <laughs> who was like, no, like, let's just, we'll get, we'll get this fixed. And I went over there. He was living with another guy um, there and had like a full shop in the garage. Um, and we made a set of armor quickly so that I never had to wear that stuff again, <laughs> which was very nice. When you came to Ontario, you were like full 14th century. Um, is that something that you came to in the middle or were you always interested in that or? I sort of, I came to it, I've jumped around a lot because um, just lots of things catch my interest and I want to do everything. Um, and then after being in the SCA for a while, like I made a 14th century outfit and I just felt really good in it. And I liked the time period. Um, and I realized that I was carrying too many things to every event. Cause like, if you have five different outfits from five different periods, now you have to bring like, a full outfit head to toe, including shoes and accessories and keep it all together. And it figured if I could make like a capsule wardrobe, <laughs> basically. Um, and so I chose 14th century for that. Uh, and then when I moved out here, I didn't bring all my stuff. Like I just put everything that would fit into my tiny Honda fit and drove out here. So I brought all the 14th century stuff because that was really the focus. Um, but I sort of slid into it accidentally. Uh, I started in Elizabethan and. <laughs> wow. And you've, you've taken forays into a lot of different cultures with your art. I cannot stay focused. <laughs> <laughs> um, so what was it like to, to move to Ontario? Because we have a reputation of being pretty insular and hard to, um, hard to break into. Um, I lived out here from the time I was in like middle school through most of high school and then moved back here for a few years. So like the bulk of my formative years were in uh, Portland. Um, so I knew what the people were like and I'm very much like that too. So I kind of knew what to expect. It wasn't a shock. Um, and again, like I knew that <laughs> I needed to just go to the events and meet people so that I could get that over with. And I knew that it would take a while, um, but people were really welcoming. Like I know it wasn't, people here and people in the Midwest are different. It was a different sort of welcome, but very, very welcoming. Um, like the first uh, 12th night I came to was shortly after I moved here and um, I didn't have a job. I had just come out here. Um, and Tally was getting knighted and I'd met him at an event and he like took me under his wing and he's like, you're 14th century, you're part of my crew now. And he was getting knighted. And so he's like, I really want you to be there. I was like, I can't, I can't afford like a hotel room. I can't. And he's like, it's fine. You're, you'll just sleep, sleep on the floor in my hotel room. It's fine. Um, and then I drove up there and parking was $20 a day. And I panicked because I didn't have that. Um, and I called Kellen because I've met her before and we were going to meet up and um, I was like, I can't, I can't do it. I'm sorry. Like, I just got to turn around. Um, and she's like, Hey, but I'm at my friend Misty or Rithkin, sorry. And you could just come over and park here and we'll all shuttle back and forth together and it'll be great. And like, that was the whole weekend of like people just making sure that I felt welcome and could be there. Um, 
and that's sort of been the experience I've had here, which has been nice. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. And you, you, one of your first events. That's what? I didn't, I didn't realize that was one of your first events. Cause I thought I was like, uh, you got the like on tier freeze for a while first. <laughs> no. Um, I mean, it always takes a while for me to make, make friends, but I also know that, and I'm used to that. Um, but people were, were very nice and I really appreciated getting to meet you and hang out with you and have some That's friends at Fault Night, which was, I mean, that was the one that was super courty and I was not expecting that. <laughs> um, but it was fun and I met a lot of people who were really great. Very cool. Where was that Twelfth Night? It was at the Double Tree. I don't think I went. <laughs> yeah, I, for people that don't know, I, I live probably five minutes from that hotel, which is why um, Susanna could just park at my house. <laughs> so, um, yeah, uh, but that was super cool. Like I, I have to admit that I felt horrible that my friend from Artemisia had to introduce me to um, this female fighter in my own kingdom. Um, so I'm, I'm going to stop beating myself up about that because <laughs> when would I have met you before? So, right. I went to one or two local events right before then. Um, cause I think I moved out in November, okay. um, like the end of November. Uh, so that was very cool. Yeah. So you got plugged in right away. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. Well, again, like I knew that I needed to, um, or because I, I don't like that like weird, I don't know anybody stage. Um, and so, so I wanted to get through that as quick as possible. That's smart. Um, most people don't look at it quite as um, strategically as that. <laughs> <laughs> and I think it's a really, really good way to look at it. You know, this is gonna be painful and it's gonna suck and let's, let's, let's make it happen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Well, I love the SCA and I didn't want to give that up. And it was something familiar when I moved out here as well. I mean, I'd lived here before, but I didn't really, um, I was a different person when I came back and uh, yeah, I mean, I was not my high school self. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, you and I pulled um, a frighteningly large amount of pictures. <laughs> So I would like to you, know what, you what was going to be interesting. Uh, well, I had the option to edit it out and they were, they were all interesting. And so I did it. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> so um, <clears throat> we can kind of keep asking questions as we go through through pictures. Mm -hmm. So uh, you, can you see that? Yes. OK. So this is one of your first events in obviously not Hawaii. Yes, uh, that's in Chicago. That's one of my first events there. I had just moved. Um, when I started, I had my Elizabethan stuff, which was my focus because I was doing Ren Faire and that's what, what I had to do. Um, not that I wasn't interested in it, but when I joined the SCA, I was like, I could do anything. Um, and also 15 layers of, or yards of wool in Hawaii is not, always the most fun um so i was like i'll do russian because that's less hot um so that's what this is which is my first attempt i think i can't remember what ah what decade it was um but it was my first like sca attempt of clothing very cool so there it is again um penzik again like that was the first year I moved to Chicago and Penzik was happening and they packed me up in a car and we all went like there was no no option that I was going to be included. So cool. Yeah. yeah. Um, and that is one of my Elizabethan ones that one predated the SCA. Uh, I think that's the only thing that did. Uh, but yeah. Awesome. So also at Penzik, making weird faces. And how did you learn to pattern? Because your stuff just fits 
so nicely. Thank you. Um, trial and error, spending too much time on the internet. Uh, I had the Janet Arnold books really early on, which was great. Um, and I just love figuring out those puzzles. So yeah, it's just a lot of fiddling. And, and this is you, and you do all your soft kit too. Uh, yes, I made most of the armor I'm wearing, not the helmet, the greaves, or the gauntlets, uh, but everything else of varying, yeah, quality. <laughs> wow. Well, your kit is, is very lovely. Is that um, something that somebody mentored you to aspire to, or were you always sort of um, interested in looking really authentic? Um, I think the, the history part is what interests me. Um, so, and like, I did have a brief encounter with the SCA before Hawaii, but like I showed up and this is nothing against anybody at the practice because now I know and like, you are not as pretty at practice as you are at events, but I didn't like, that was my only interaction with the SCA at the time. And I showed up and the armored fighters were all in like pickle barrel and didn't look pretty. And so it just didn't hold interest for me. Cause I was like, well, if I'm going to do fighting, like I can do fighting and not wear that in another as for and I'm trying to like in an, in another way like it's way less effort if I want to just go do like martial arts somewhere um if I'm gonna do this for me personally like it's it's the history behind it that makes it interesting and and worth it um and yeah so that is that was what was important to me when I started um from the get-go I guess and, and then you got assimilated what then you got assimilated. Yes. <laughs> Go ahead. And I do have like plastic on my kit, but I do enjoy like looking historical and that is still important to me. Um, but like the legs on the ones before, like I just needed armor and I didn't know anything. And so I bent them out of 14 gauge mild steel and they weighed a ton. So <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's been a journey. Uh, so this is, Tong, uh, I can never say it right, Tong, Tang Dynasty, Tang Dynasty. China, 7th century, um, because my partner, Sun Jiang, uh, has a Chinese persona and wanted me to make an outfit to match him, um, but he does earlier period, and I went and started looking at Chinese clothing and got distracted, and so went with this accidentally. <laughs> Um, and this was a chest that's not finished here, uh, but it's put together, uh, like it's upside down. There's the finished one. Um, cause I, I made my tent and was super proud of myself. And then first night <laughs> in it, I was like, I am in a sleeping bag on the ground with a giant cavernous tent around me. This is ridiculous. Uh, so I needed stuff to fill up the tent. <laughs> and also carry like food and stuff. So I've used that for a while now to, as like my little food chest. Um, and, and it's another one that I made to put my clothes in. So I wasn't just in plastic bins that I had to hide it all over the place. Do you have a shop or did you have access to somebody help you do this or? Um, I've had access to shops for some of the armor and some of the woodworking. These were just like hand saws in my yard. Oh, and um, you, you said you made your tent too? Yeah. <laughs> so this is the wanted one. <laughs> so this is a good close up of your gambeson. This is brand new before it gets trashed. So I know it's a bathroom selfie, but all of the other pictures look like a disaster. Um. So yeah, this is it's late 14th century, like 14. 70s-esque um and I really really like this this design I've sort of honed in on it over the years um I I, I think the the piecing around the front in the armpit is really interesting thank you that's 
that's based on some extant garments and like artwork uh, from the time. And I was super struggling with it, trying to figure out the fit around me. And then my um, friend who uh, also named, like, I'm just not gonna remember any names today. I'm sorry. Um, it was like, hey, let's do a gambeson party. We're gonna do grand os old pattern grand ossiette gambesons. I'm like, I've been working on this thing for like six months and I cannot get it and it's driving me crazy. Fine, we'll go over and like five of us will do it in a day. Sure, I believe you. And I showed up and he like drew it out for me and it was perfect within an inch or two. Like I think I pinched out some, because he was magic, I don't know. <laughs> but anyway, now I have a sleeve pattern and it's fantastic and I love it. Super cool. The, the fit is fantastic. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, this is Han Dynasty Chinese for Sun Jiang's knighting. Um, I wanted to make something. He wanted to do a, like a full uh, Chinese ceremony because you don't get to see that very often. Um, and so I wanted to make something that actually matched his period. <laughs> uh, and this is this is a style that I've been trying to wrap my brain around for oh a good fifteen years, and <laughs> you just yeah, I still haven't made one, so that's how far I've gotten. <laughs> well, it's super and, fun. I would do it differently. Like I learned a lot. Yeah, um, but I had like, I hate to say it, but like three days to do it because I was so far. Like I wanted to make sure he had his outfit all done. Um, we didn't have a lot of time because we'd had like this long vacation planned and then they put him on vigil and we're like, that's fantastic. And we're so happy and congratulations. And oh no. <laughs> <laughs> so there are more pictures of that later. I did not get them in a very good order. Um, when you were in the middle, you did cost a lot of costuming for other people. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about that um, a little bit. This is my friend Daniel's stool. I made him the shirt and the pants. The pants are not buttoned because I made them a little small, but he loves them and he won't give them back so that I can fix it. <laughs> um, but yes, he normally tucks them in his boots and everything's fine. Um, but other than that, I do like them and I'm I'm thrilled that he, he wears them all the time. Um, this is, after COVID, I finally got the buttons on my sleeves after not wearing them. I mean, I made the dress. I wore it for like three years and now I have buttons finally. And I also <laughs> went a little stir crazy and made a coat for my dog because COVID. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> and and she, she rocks this coat. It's so beautiful. <laughs> so it's all hand embroidered in silk on wool with pearls um that's amazing because yeah i wasn't making bread <laughs> <laughs> um and this is a archery is a blurry picture i'm sorry uh archery armband off of one from the 14th century in the museum of london book um the shape is the the art i just did um, I tried to like base it, I think I based it off of a shoe pattern, um, but Rotrude taught a fantastic class on how to do this sort of leather work, and so I wanted to try it, and this was like a small, easy thing to do it on, and you can totally see where like I learned what not to do with the stippling, um, <laughs> but her class was great. My stippling is questionable. Well, but it was it it's a beginning project. Yeah. Susanna, so this was, <laughs> what? Can I ask you a question real quick? You you seem to have all the skills, like woodworking, metalworking, uh, uh, textile. Um, do you have a background in, in art or, or craftsmanship I mean, or are you just self-taught? Mostly self-taught reading stuff. I mean, I have friends who know how to do stuff and I have, like I said, zero focus. Um, well, I, I don't think that's true. <laughs> so, 
Well, you, you are also fearless and you have an incredible attention to detail and a very high standard of, of work. And so you. when you do things, you do them well. Thank you. <laughs> you, just, you stick to it until you do them well. So I just hide are, all the terrible stuff. <laughs> <laughs> we are looking at the inside of a hotel room right now. Yes. Um, which I just, I, de I decorated this. Um, this was Sun Jung's vigil. Um, and I wanted to make it pretty for him. So I asked um, Matthias Bain, who has made this tent uh, for hotel rooms, if I could borrow it so that we could have a pretty vigil um, and then decorated it to look like a, uh, I found the images of Han Dynasty banquets that had the red and black swags of fabric. Um, so we tried to give it sort of a Chinese feel. Um, but like he brought the, he had made the, the tent for a Viking vigil for Sir Merowyn uh, the year before, or two years. Um, so yes, I stole a lot of his stuff and he was very nice with helping figure out how to fit it to a different shaped hotel room and make it look atmospheric. At and, and you have a, uh, a relationship with him. He's your knight. Yes. Okay. So this was the underlayer outfit of the outfit that I, I made for Sun Jung. Um, he made the hat, which is delightful. Um, and then the, the robe is like a silk hemp blend that uh, Geneva, whose SCA name I now also can't remember. Tessina. Tessina gave me, because yes, <laughs> I was panicking um, <laughs> on what to do for all of this stuff. And she's like, well, I have this and here you go. Um, and it's, it's lovely. And I worked with a Shaxi on patterning it. And cause I hadn't done really much Chinese stuff before. Um, and, and, and you say that, but really you came over and I didn't help at all. And you left and you went home and you did a pattern. <laughs> you did help though. You helped a lot. <laughs> um, and yeah, because he really wanted the 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 crisscross tail hem thing that that's going on. So we worked hard trying to figure that out um, yes, and make it fit like because he wanted a, like a, a closer fit. Um, yeah, yeah. So we did we did tail a little bit more than maybe it would have been done. But like if you look at the the statues, I mean they're clay. And they're not going to drape like fabric, so you're kind of trying to like walk that line <clears throat> between between what was shown. Um, so yes, this is all all silk that he brought back from Turkmenistan when he was out there. Um, and green means renewal, so he he wanted to to bring that meaning into his his nighting stuff. Um, oh, and there's your tent. Yeah, and there's my tent which I finally finished painting during COVID and then I finished and COVID is still happening. <laughs> Did you do all the, all the hardware inside as well as the, as the. Yes. Uh, with some, some of my friends in the middle, they built their tent and basically let me live with them for a month plus <laughs> and use their industrial sewing machine and their shop and and gave me a lot of a lot of tips and help. Um, it's awesome. So, yeah. And this hat, I made. I only made the hat in this picture. Um, but he asked if I would make him a fancy Scythian hat, which I knew nothing about the Scythians, and it turns out they're amazing. Um, Welcome to the dark side. <laughs> So yeah, this was uh, my first like faux represe chasing thing. I just had like foam and 
uh, like little embossing tools, tools. Actually, embossing, yes. yeah, to sort of press it into shape. Um, and it was super fun. And and you bought you bought a felt hat blank and made it work. Yeah, so it's a it's actually two felt hat blanks off of Amazon that I shaped and cut up and smooshed together, and then I made all the plaques. Um, because so good. <laughs> and I made this. This is a Boxton man's cloak based off of that pattern. Um, and he wanted a fancy cloak. I made one for Sun Jung. Um, because again, he's been stuck with me inside of COVID and told me that he would wear whatever I made him. So I made him a 14th century outfit. <laughs> um, and then Michael contacted me and said he was jealous and wanted a cloak too. So I made him a cloak and it was super fun. And he is very tall. <laughs> uh, so this one, I, I convinced him to let me do the dags on it because I really wanted to try it. And the fabric that he bought was perfect for it. Um, it doesn't fray at all. So I could just cut. Awesome. So beautiful. Thank you. Um, and this <laughs> was, this, <guy>. <laughs> this is Seto, who is a wonderful human. Um, and I made this outfit very early on because we had like a Japanese themed event. Um, and then Seto just rocks it. Like, I'm so glad that he loves it. Um, oh, and changed his heraldry to match it too. So there, there's a picture of him from the back in it too. I guess we'll find that later. And here you are just forging something up. Yeah, um, this was at an event. Uh, my friend Eric was teaching a forging class. And so I got to play. Um, and this is a weird mix of early 15th century. Oh, well. <laughs> 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 that hat got stolen and now it's no longer. But oh, that's blurry, I'm sorry. That's okay. That was one of my pictures. Um, this was Ursulmus, which was a blast. This is right before COVID, right? I might be, or the year before. I don't remember which which one it was. Yeah, I, th I think it was the last Ursulmus. Uh, this is Sun Jung's knighting. I wonked up the collar wearing it, but other than that. <laughs> So yeah, this is Ursulimus again. I've ditched the super heavy legs. Sorry, these are so oh, so mixed up and, and uh... that's okay. <laughs> I finally finished this hood this year. I started it like five years ago. <laughs> it has followed me through multiple states and so many moves. Um, it is super cute. Thank you. I was tired of being cold at events here because that is another big difference between the mid realm and here. It cools off at night and I get cold. And it can sneak up on you. It can, yeah. yes. Um, which is great actually, because I really like wearing the layers and the wool and now I have chances to wear the dresses because in Illinois, like you're either it's either a billion degrees outside in the summer and super humid or it's winter and it's super cold, but you're inside. So we didn't have like a happy medium. Right. You, we didn't have like the wear multiple layers of overdresses weather at events. Um, I love plaid. It makes me so happy. I do too. <laughs> <laughs> And then this is a statue that you did another piece off of that we're going to come up on here in just a second. Yeah. There. Um, so the statue shows probably a fitted shift. There's kind of, um, there's not a lot of evidence one way or the other, but it seems like there is some evidence for fitted shifts and there's some evidence for loose shifts. Um, this is on a statue in, I forget where it is. The dress itself is late 14th century Swiss. Um, but 
yeah, the I wanted to try the fitted shift with it because the fabric that I had that pink is is really lightweight and I didn't want to make a, a supportive gown, especially with all the buttons like it seems like an overlayer, but it's so tight um, on the statue that I wasn't sure that it went over another dress. Um, so yeah. And then there's my cloak because I got jealous of everybody else's cloaks. <laughs> <laughs> and I did all the dags for me. So all the way up the edge. Uh, there's me and the dog again and my ridiculous mug. Um, and and fur-lined sleeves? What are those? It's called? faux fur, but yes. Uh, so cool. It is a very warm dress that I can only break out when it's cold, which means I get to wear it a lot here, which I love. <laughs> uh, and there's some Jung in his 14th century outfit that he says has way too many buttons, but he's a minor, so. I love the stripes on the top. Thank yeah. you, I really like it yeah. too. Uh, he found that fabric and I, I stole it for him. Um, and I think he looks lovely in 14th century. Uh, this is the hat that I made for Vivian um, after she'd actually scamp or Felix asked me to make her a fancy hat and then she only wanted a plain hat, but he still wanted a fancy hat so he had me make him a fancy one and then she got jealous and so I got to make her a fancy one too. And this <laughs> is her fancy hat. And this is her in the fancy hat. Yes, this is Scythian. Um, and did I did all the plaques and, and yes. The way it sits and the way that the veil flows, it's just so spot on, it's so good. Thank you, it was, it was super, super fun to do. And it weighs and, a million pounds. And it weighs a million pounds, because how did you make these? Uh, I cast them. Yeah. And I probably should have cast them hollow, but they were my first casting project, so I didn't know what I was doing. Um, but the weight keeps it on your head, so there's that. <laughs> so awesome. Okay, and so now we're back. Seto again. Um, he wanted a, that's a Jim Bowery over his, his armor um, that I made for him that in the mid-realm colors. And there's, there's him again. He wanted a mid-realm slash midlands, which was our uh, area uh, outfit that was Japanese. Um, and there he is. And I made the, the green for him. With He's standing with his lineage. And there's another of the Jim Bowery's. That one's the regional one I made for him. Um, that was machine. Those are all machine applique because he was going to destroy them fighting. And that is the sleeve of my dress. With all the little handmade buttons. Yes, which I love buttons. <laughs> this is Bane with the Rommel pot that I made for him as a present for taking me as a squire. And now <laughs> I made me one, a little one. Make it make the sound. It gets better the more you play it too, which is the best. And Rob may or may not kick me out of the house. He was going to kick me out of the car on the way to that event when I was carrying the Rommel pot to Bane. That's funny. So, and this is what that same Gamison looks like now yeah, after <laughs> <laughs> close um, up and the that's the holes. buttonholes of the fur hood and that's before i added the fur that was the embroidery and there's rob's rob's outfit with my uh whatever that drinking water thing is so Here's him in his cloak with his buttons. Oh, sorry. It's all right. He looks great, I think. He does. He's very handsome. He really does. There we go. Very 
That is the OO cop that my friend helped me make before I ruined it while it was still pretty. Um, this was the armor project. He helped me make these out of spring steel. I made both. The ones on the left are my first armor project out of the 14 gauge steel with a hammer on the floor. Um, and then he had like a real shop and helped me make this set of arms, which was lovely, but we messed up the heat treating. So they cracked after not too long, which is sad because they were so light and great to wear. Um, so yeah, this is all, all clamped up for um, heat treatment. Super cool. This is the belt for the, the Chinese. I wear it for uh, both the Tang and the Han Dynasty stuff because I did the embroidery and added the little flower beads. Because on the statue, it had like this like bullseye belt. Um, but then I found the shiny beads and needed to be shiny. <laughs> and you do a lot of your work from looking at statuary. I do. I like, because that at least gives me like a, it helps me keep from getting too overloaded with like looking at everything. So I'm like, well, if I match this thing, then I know that at least this outfit is okay. Um, this was my shirt project because there was a, I got roped into doing a ANS competition. And one of the things required was a Byz Byzantine project. Um, and I was looking through museum stuff, trying to figure out like what I was gonna do because I didn't know anything. And I kept coming across these things and found out about ostracons. Like there were all these broken pieces of pottery with words on them. And it turns out that they are just post-it notes, like ancient post-it notes. You break your pottery and then you write your grocery list on it. <laughs> um, which I thought was delightful, so. Uh, Sun Jung helped me make some some clay pots and because uh, he's a pottery high school pottery teacher in real life um, and then I broke them and I made ink and I wrote on them <laughs> and then let other people write on them and it was super fun and I'm and so glad that you entered that competition because I got to be your judge and we got to meet yes I was super glad too, and I really, really appreciated that because you're great. That is a mutual feeling. <laughs> I'm super glad that that happened for us. And this is my second or third anthropomorphic mug because for that same project, I decided I found like these, they're really ridiculous looking people mugs <laughs> from the 14th century and I found this guy and he was like, a lot of them are very well done. They're very artistic. And then I found like this image of this like really wonky dude cup. And I was like, well, that's in line with my skills and it makes me laugh. So I'm going to make that one. Um, so I did this and then the glaze turned out all wrong. I need to try again. It should be like a deep green, um, but we really only had like one shot at firing it. So that was that. And then this is, so this is another that I made after after first dude, um, because Ashoxy told me lots of things about making pottery and letting it dry and then rubbing it with rocks to make it smooth. <laughs> <laughs> um, and this is my water bottle, blanking on the name. Canteen. Uh, it's it's got a different name and I forget what it is, but yes. Um. So that I can have a, like it's based off of ones, a lot were like in the Mary Rose, but there's ones that are earlier too. Um, and there are thankfully a lot of good tutorials online on how to make these guys, which means I don't have to drink out of plastic water bottles on the field, mostly. Um, wow. It says it's a I did, What? Costral? Costral, yes. Thank you. Um. Yeah, Thanks. I made it and it leaked like a sieve. So I <laughs> put a mass amount of beeswax in the sides and then it was fine until it got warm. And so this year I, I redid it with um, pitch. So fingers crossed that will keep it from being as leaky. 
there is the first first hat again, um, Scythian hat. And there's Seto in the outfit I made. So. Look at how those stripes line up over that pleat. That's amazing. Yeah, thank that, you. Uh, <laughs> that was important to me. <laughs> Let's just appreciate that. <laughs> okay. Spent a lot of time on that, so I appreciate it. I did also stay stitch all of the pleats because I love and adore Seto and I knew it would never get ironed again. Um, and so there's there's his uh, mid realm Jimbari, which he really, really wanted a fancy new one because he was doing fancy army stuff that year. And I said I would make him one, but he owes me ice cream for life and he has followed through. <laughs> So another terrible bathroom selfie. I need to get better pictures. Um, but this is the, the, the Tang Dynasty. I'm trying to get the hair. It's like big. Um, and that's a better than the first time I wore it, but I'm still not there yet. Um, I wonder if they used hair pieces. They did. And I do have some fake hair that I'm going to work on. And I made a hairpin for next time. Oh, so cool. So I, I'm just going to um, say that you have the most amazing um, pictures where you guys are out in nature modeling your clothes. So I think we can deal with a couple of bathroom selfies. Thank you. <laughs> I have been trying to to take better pictures because Rob has like tripods and things. So. And this, you taught a shield class with the leveling up. Yes. Thing, so. Just want to mention that that's your sh a close up of your shield. That is. Oh. Ah. There's the the Rommel pot, the first first go. And which was that put, a uh, pot that you bought? Yeah, I did buy that one at. Um, I found it at Goodwill and it looked perfect, so I stole it. I mean, I bought I bought it. I paid them money. <laughs> 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 um. And I think that's it. We made it through all the pictures. Yay. <laughs> Woohoo. So, yeah. I, I thought that was going to be a slog, but it wasn't. Sorry. <laughs> it was good. I hope it was, it was not too, too boring. No. It's super interesting. Yeah. You, you have such a good eye for um, so many different, for taking, you know, an, an image from history and and kind of duplicating the um, aesthetic. Uh, and it's fascinating how many different mediums that you're able to work in. Like the, the backdrop behind you is your ground cloth for your tent. Yeah, I, I pulled that out because I painted it last year and have not gotten to set up my tent and I want to, to use it for something. <laughs> <laughs> no matter how much Rob or Sun Jung rolled his eyes at me, but. <laughs> he set it up for me and there it is it's very cute <laughs> thank you what um how do you think it is that you're able to just kind of jump in and do stuff do you just not have any fear of failing or do you just well, have, have enough drive to i have lots of fear of failing but i also just really love learning stuff and trying things um, I do feel bad that I have like, I feel like I have this shallow ability at lots of things rather than like a deep ability at anything. Um, but I just get excited, I guess. And I'm like, I would like to do that thing and there's people doing it. So therefore it must be possible. Um, and I also tend to have like very specific things that I want. And I'm like, well, I can spend like a bajillion hours on the internet looking for something that's going to be not quite right and probably out of my price range. Or I can just spend an equally bajillion many dollars making it. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> and it'll be just perfect. <laughs> Ish. But it'll be my not perfect as opposed to I can, I can dislike me instead of somebody else. So there. <laughs> Well, I, I don't think it's shallow. Like, I think you take these deep dives into um, discrete um, 
different things and this like deep dive and then up and then deep dive. So um, I would not characterize that as shallow. I don't think any of those projects show a shallow, um, when you decide you're gonna do it, you go all in and you make all the stuff. And you know, for, for me, I buy the stuff and I put it together. Um, but your stuff is amazing, so. <laughs> But I'm not taking that deep dive to learn how to do the metalwork. And I mean, so anyway, I just, I am in awe of um, how you decide, oh, I'm going to do this project and I'm going to do it right. And it's Thank you. So I, um, I have to apologize in the flyers that we made up. Um, I said that you were a, a lady ship. Oh, and you're not. <laughs> I didn't even catch that. I'm sorry. <laughs> So that's um, really interesting to me that, uh, do you think that's because you've moved around so much? Um, I don't know. I mean, I really, I do what I do. Um, I haven't really sh shown my art stuff as much. Um, and I did realize in talking to people earlier last year like rob and you and and some other friends that people didn't realize that i made the stuff that i use um and i realized i i haven't really talked about it um partially because like at events like i go and i fight uh because i i mean there's a limited amount of time and i can't fight by myself in my living room um, but I have also missed having some of like the arts camaraderie, um, which I did have, but like on a personal level in the mid realm. And now I'm finally, I'm getting that now, which is making me really happy yeah. here. Um, and, and you've gone about it really intentionally. Like I want some art friends. I'm going to go make some art friends and I'm going to make <laughs> that happen for myself. And I think that's, that's really cool that you do that. Um, thank you. Yeah. Thank you for being my art friends. Hey. <laughs> I need more art friends too. <laughs> well, I was like, I'm sad and alone and like crafting by myself. And where have I gone wrong? <laughs> I don't think you've gone wrong anywhere. So let's talk about your fighting journey. Um, Rifkin, do you have any questions to ask about her fighting journey? <laughs> I, yeah, um, you fight sword and shield, um, which is great. I do too. Um, is that what you like? Have you um, dabbled? I saw a picture of you with a great sword or a bastard sword. Um, I have dabbled. I like other weapons forms. Um, I have some neck issues. And so a lot of times, especially like that's been a, its own journey. Um, <laughs> But like if I, a lot of times I don't feel comfortable getting hit by great weapons because I'm just like, my neck is real weird. And so I can't practice that. And I don't wanna practice a weapon against somebody that I don't wanna get hit by. Like that doesn't seem fair. Um, so I've stuck to certain shield a lot, uh, especially recently um, because of that. And then people say, oh, they're like, oh, no, it's fine. It's fine. I'm like, but I feel like this weird, I don't know. I feel weird about it. Um, and then also, I mean, now that I'm realizing talking about it, like when I first started, people were like, oh, you should fight great weapon because you're a girl and you should start that. And like, that was especially then the way to get me to never pick it up. Um, <laughs> so... <laughs> They're like, sword and shield is going to be harder for you. I'm like, well, I choose the ridiculously hard path. Like, I'm going to chop off my nose to spite my face every time. And I have stopped that somewhat. Um, but, but yeah, so, but a lot of it now is just that, like, but like, I have done some great sword and it was super fun and I'd love to do more. I've done some, um, some pole arm especially in, in melees and stuff like that. Um, so there, during the pandemic, there's been this whole sort of movement about equity and um, the fighting culture. And I know, because I know you, 
um, that you've been sort of behind the scenes building community. Um, can you sort of tell me like what your reaction's been to that? Like what, or, you know, what your experience has been and what you see going forward for the community? Um, uh, that's a lot. <laughs> that is a lot. Um, I don't know. Like I've been, I've been really happy that people are, are becoming more aware of the, the issues that different types of communities end up dealing with. Um, and even from the the space or the idea that not everybody learns the same way, like a practice that works really well for one specific type of person isn't going to work really well for a bunch of other people. And so, how do we bring in a wider wider range of people? Um, which I think is great, and I feel like people are are listening more. Um, and I personally am feeling more comfortable speaking up uh, for a lot of different reasons. Um, Oh, like a lot of my journey, like, or for fighting, I was going to school for physics and it took me a million years to get through my bachelor's because of various reasons. But like, I was just bashing my head against sexism constantly at school. And so I didn't want to fight those battles coming to a hobby. It didn't mean that they weren't there. It just meant that like, I couldn't, I didn't have the emotional energy to do it. Um, but now I'm graduated and I don't have to do that anymore and I quit my terrible job and Sun Jung's a wonderful partner and I have wonderful friends and so now I'm like well let's fix these things because yeah you've got a good support network in place right. And, yeah right um and I do feel like I've established myself a little bit more so I'm not like the new woman coming into fighting and saying you're all doing it wrong um because people aren't, but there are issues. Yeah, for sure. Um, how do you balance the fighting and the art? You, we were talking, I, I don't know, like how much, how much of the conversations we've had, I can pull into the interview and how yeah. much I shouldn't. Um, <clears throat> but you were talking about how you've kind of pushed your art kind of to the back a little bit. Do you want to talk yeah. about that? Um, sure. I don't know. My computer just darkened and I want to make sure. I guess I'm plugged in. All right. Sorry. Um, so I have, and, and like we, we talked about this, so I kind of know where, where you're going. Um, <laughs> when I started fighting, like I realized that um, like if I was in a dress and this still happens though, like my friends will talk to me, but like if I'm in a dress and somebody doesn't know me, like they don't talk about fighting with me at all. Like they, I can try and like push myself into the conversation or join it or whatever. And they will talk over my head to the dude I'm standing with, whether or not he's a fighter. And they don't even care whether or not he's a fighter. They just want to talk fighting with him. Um, and so I did realize that one, if I'm, if I'm dressed like a girl, like I just can't talk about fighting unless I'm with my friends. Um, and so I specifically didn't dress like a girl for a while. Um, I mean, I still, and then I sort of just like knew that that was gonna happen. Um, and I also wanted to be taken seriously on the field. And I felt like I had to downplay the, the girly arts parts of me. Um, and no one ever like specifically said that, but that was definitely the feeling I got. Um, I don't know if that makes sense. Um, so now that I've been fighting longer, like people know me. And so like, I don't feel that as much. And I've had the chance to do more art stuff, which has been great. Um, so yeah. Yeah. That, that, that was what I was, I was getting at having you reveal. <laughs> <laughs> I to tell you that I can be wearing my belt and be in, like, it happened to me at a score at Kings. At, um, there was mostly Kaid people and they didn't know who I was mm -hmm. and they like acted like I wasn't there. 
And it was so um, disheartening, really, mm -hmm. because then I had to have like, it was either Sean or Alfgar be like, oh, do you know Sir Rithkin? And I was like, you know, like, why are you, why are you just dismissing me because right. a woman? Right. Anyway, it is um, disheartening right. to hear, but not surprising. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, do you see my belt, bitches? Right. <laughs> I but gotta like, not that kind of person, right? Like, <laughs> no, no. I showed up to a fighting class, and I don't want to get too like I don't want to like, but I showed up to a fighting class in a dress because uh, it wasn't a fighting event, um, and I specifically decided like this is my arts event. Um, but there was a really cool class and I wanted to go to it. And I, so I brought my sword and shield and I went and I grabbed it and somebody was like, wow, you really picked that up. Like you knew what you were doing and like, and then took it away from me and like showed everybody how I picked up my sword and how cool it was. And I'm like, I know you're trying to be nice, but it is not nice. Hilarious. <laughs> but it is. Yeah. I'm, you're just a natural Susanna. Right, like I just, <laughs> it's really cool how this sword I made to fit my hand really fits my hand so it's comfortable. <laughs> yeah. uh, that's so, awesome. Tell me how you chose your knight. Um, well, I had been squared before in the mid realm. Um, so I'm assuming you mean, I don't know, but like, it's two different paths, I guess. Um, when I moved out here, like it wasn't bad or anything. It just, I now live here and uh, Duke Kellick lives in the Ohio, which is a long way away. Um, so I, um, I don't know, I had just been really impressed by Matthias Bain and how he presented himself. We seem to see the SCA in the same way. Um, like I camped with his group and it just felt like home. Um, and he, he had talked to me a little bit before I was really ready to, to start that like re journey, I guess. Um, Cause it took me a while to, uh, to decide it was time to, to, I don't know, it's hard to cut ties. Um, and, but I, I had watched him, like I was, in, he's local. Um, he, his other squires, like he was always there for them. Um, when Luciano would drive up from Eugene, like he would show up to practice and he would make sure that he was there even if he couldn't fight because he was hurt or whatever. Um, and I was just really impressed that he, he made that time and made that commitment um, and we got along, like he's also from the Midwest. So he, he, I do have some of that like Midwest snark in my DNA <laughs> as well. And so like that, <laughs> um, I don't know, we just, we get along and I, I'm really impressed by the fact that he, he does everything. Um, he's impressive. And this year it's been fun. Like there hasn't been fighting, but I've gotten to sort of connect with him and Finn on, on more of the arts level which has been great as well, because they're both super talented and knowledgeable. Um, so. Um, yeah. and, and the other thing about him, and, and, and you kind of have danced around this, so um, is that he is um, one of the knights that is very respectful of women. Yes, he's never made me feel different or like it's a thing. Yeah. And that's important. Mm -hmm. But also without like erasing who I am. Yeah. Um, he just treats me like a human. And he's safe. Yeah. And, and that I think that, um, I mean, it sucks that we have to be talking about this, but we need to talk about it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, women need to feel safe and I think that any female fighter that's coming into this game needs to really do some observing of, of the people that she wants to attach. She's thinking about mm -hmm. it them, herself to and see how they interact uh, with women in, on the fighting field, off the fighting field and really um, 
go go into any sort of relationship that they're considering with eyes wide open Mm -hmm. and and be really critical and judgmental about it because there's a power imbalance when when a night squire relationship that um some people can take advantage of and it can be um a really bad situation for a woman. I'm not saying you were ever in that kind of a relationship, um, but he is is one of the men that that's never going to be a problem with. Yeah, and I was aware of that before squiring, and that was something like it took me a while to squire to anybody, um, but I felt that way with Kellick, and he also treated me like person. And his wife, Vukasin, also fights, but he never did the like, well, my wife fights, so I know everything about women. It just was a thing. And um, and Bane, too. And he also, like, believe me, like I said, somebody was making me uncomfortable. And um, a lot of times, guys will just sort of blow that off or be like, oh, he means well or whatever. But he and Finn, like, physically turned so that they were between me and the other person and like had a not weird conversation about it like they're just like hey like what do you want us to do like and that the fact that they believed me and weren't going to make a big big scene about it because that's also horrifying um and just like made sure that I felt safe was great and I really appreciated that um they're both great people all of them are great people (laughs) but it's it's a good group. Yeah. Sorry, that got a little soapboxy on it my did, end. I'm but... sorry. But yeah, <laughs> it is a thing and needs to be. I, I think it's really important. And I think that as we go back, um, you know, and more new women are um, looking at fighting and getting more involved in fighting, um, I, one of the things that I really appreciate and like about you is how thoughtful you are about everything that you do. And, and you, um, you know, you know, it's going to be rough going into a new group. So you, you, you are thoughtful about that and you, you, you do some observing and, and you, you make decisions. And um, I would encourage um, any new people uh, to, to really kind of take that tact and, and observe and, don't make commitments to any sort of peer without really knowing what that person is like in a variety of situations. Yeah. I didn't even think about squaring for three or four years into my fighting journey. Um, Cause yeah, I was just being, and I did have some good advice from a friend at the start who was like, don't jump into a household. Like don't, like just meet people, take your time. Find your place. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that was really good advice. Cause I know that there is, and people want to include people. And I don't think there's anything, there's like usually not like a nefarious thing behind it, but people want to include new people into their household and their group and everything. And like, but then that new person feels this pressure to join this one group, but they haven't gotten to experience anything else. Um, And there's a lot to the SCA and each group is different. Um, I don't know, like I've camped with some people who were, and I've gotten to camp with a lot of different groups, which is great. And there's very different vibes in each one. And like, it's not bad, but like some I'm like, that's cool. But like, that's not my, that's not my thing. but this other one over here is. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the flip side of that is, is, is that there is a space for everybody, no matter what your, what your thing is. Um, Absolutely. And uh, that's important to remember too, just because one group wasn't completely hospitable to everything that you are, doesn't mean that there is not a good place for you to be a safe place for you to be. So I think there's a way to balance um, making people feel welcome and like they have a spot Mm -hmm. and not um, making them feel like um, they can't explore other groups, like, like not making them feel like 
somehow they own you now. Right. Um, there's a good balance there. And I think sometimes we're not, we as a group aren't very good at that balance. Um, mm-hmm. Like not even just camping, but like uh, teaching or, you know, um, I, I call some nights collectors because they collect people um, before the people have a chance to um, really figure out who um, meshes with them on a, on a learning teaching level. Um, and I just, I think as we go back, it would be really great if we could be more mindful about mm-hmm. um, being welcoming, um, but at the same time, letting people explore. Right. Yeah. I agree. And like, I, I did really appreciate that uh, that friend early on, um, cause he was part of a group that, that was really just bringing, like grabbing new people. And in some ways it was great. Cause like they, they make sure that you have everything you need. They make sure you have a ride. They call you before events to make sure that you could be there, which is all fantastic. Um, and really great for new people because then like, I didn't feel like, am I welcome? Am I not? Like, I didn't have to like dance around that weirdness. But then there was a lot of pressure to join them and play their way. Um, And my friend was like, no, like, you're great. We'll be friends. Come hang out anytime. But you were, you fit with a different group. Like you want to do the arts. You want to do this. And they only fought. Like it was show up, fight, go home. And that wasn't like, I wanted to do everything. (laughs) Um, and I, I appreciated him saying that and like giving me that explicit permission, I guess, to be like, go find your spot. Don't join anybody, find your spot. Um, there's a lot out there and we will always be friends. It's not going to be an issue. Just come hang out. Um, which was great. Like that was fantastic. It's something that I try to do. Um, even people that are, that are not new to the SCA, but maybe just new to the area, you know, say you, you always have a spot for, with us, you're always welcome with us, but, mm-hmm. you know, go play with these people over here, go do this thing, you know. Yeah. We're not going to require, like, I don't require any of my apprentices to camp with us and to, I mean, if they want that and they want that feeling of, of home, mm-hmm. you know, we're here, we'll do that, but um, it's totally not a requirement. I think people need to be free to, to play. Mm-hmm. I agree. So, and I've seen a lot of people who join the, join a group and get sucked in and then quit because it's not quite right for them. And I'm like, but there's this whole world over here. Like just, just step like five feet to the right. <laughs> You'll be great. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think that's really important. So going back What are your goals? What are you, what are you looking forward to? What do you want to change? Um, You ever go back? Who knows? Right. Um, I would like to use the things that I've made this past year. Um, I miss my friends. I miss camping at events. Um, I miss being able to fight. Uh, I want to do all of that. I'd like to, like, I've gotten to, to connect with the arts world more this past year because I realized that I was missing it and, and got help trying to integrate myself in. Um, and so I want to do more of that going forward too. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I just miss like sitting around the fire with my friends and I want that. I want to start our Rommel Pot Orchestra that we've been talking about. <laughs> I think that uh, I'm going to have to uh, make one. <laughs> I think that Molly would really enjoy playing that with you. And uh... I agree. I've got I've got extra. I just bought more. Uh, it's it's like a drum skin head. Uh, I have more. Oh, well, we'll have to do that then. We'll have a little backyard <laughs> yeah. making session. Like serenade Bane in as he processes in um, um, for crown with your rumble pots. A hundred percent. Maybe maybe we'll do that for you, Rifkin. <laughs> Bane put his up in like a place of honor though, like right next to his 
helmet and next to like all of his fancy things and there's there's the rumble pot <laughs> makes me so happy <laughs> that's love <laughs> oh well Rifkin, do you have any other questions well i because you have so many um interests and i consider um you making art for other people a service um you have a night but are you interested or in formally exploring the other paths do you have a laurel do you have a pelican um i mean bane is all of those right <laughs> um i i have close laurel friends which i really super appreciate it shaxi has been wonderful um <laughs> but That's my close laurel friend too <laughs> uh i feel weird and i i don't have any issues with other people having multiple peers but i feel weird having multiple peers um and so i mean bane is everything so that makes it easy yeah um i don't know no that's cool that's cool and 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 uh yeah, I mean, he 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 has all the peerages, so he can <laughs> do and whatever you want to do. So, I think that that's totally legit, and uh, he is a good mentor. So, and his wife Celeste is a amazing Laurel and Pelican. Finn is my squire brother and is a Pelican. So, no. like, I don't feel a lack of support. No, you are well well. Uh, you have a lot of representation if you desire it <laughs> <laughs> and we've talked about this ad nauseum so <laughs> well i haven't and yeah. yeah so no that's okay yes i yeah okay um and you know we we, we ask uh because we think you're awesome and we want to make sure that you're well supported so thank you i i say we rifkin but I think you feel the same way. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Oritzkin has been wonderful. No, well. I, no, when you told me you didn't have a mid-level award, I, um, I really think that's kind of a, a tragedy that, that um, we have, we as a culture um, have overlooked you. Um, so I, because you, you give give back so much um and you have invest so much um it just uh, i i wonder how we can do better about um award recommendations and knowing um if our friends have what maybe we think they should have i don't know how to make that better i know that i've looked people up on the op and they're not there mm -hmm. and they have things so i, I right I have I have done that and I don't I don't feel a lack of support and I've just sort of been bopping along doing my stuff. Um, but like I, I have like misspelled my friends' names and I'm like, oh man, they don't have an AOA and then they do, but then I miss other people and um it's hard. Yeah. And and so that just kind of goes to um write recommendations for your friends. Don't wait for a peer to do it. Don't wait for uh, someone who's been playing forever if if there's somebody that has if you're a new person and there's somebody that's mentored you um hop on the onto your website and um, write a recommendation and if you're not sure how to write a recommendation i there used to be examples up are there examples anymore it's like a form now like it's super easy like yeah all the little things you fill in and then you you know you fill in a blurb about you know the cool thing that you saw them doing or the cool things they're doing or whatever um it's it's very self-explanatory it and it's fun i like writing them yeah <laughs> and i hate writing anything but like filling out the form and yeah i don't know talking about my friends is fun yeah it kind of makes you feel good because it makes you feel like you're you're doing something good i don't know <laughs> so write those recommendations people i know that we're not really doing court in this kingdom right now but i mean we are a little bit but not extensively um but it's still worth it to do it so yeah 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 
All right. You no, know, I if if we really wait to have crown until twelfth night, I am just like that court is gonna rival Davin and Grow us two thousand three step down with all <laughs> the peerages. It's gonna be a twenty hour court. Plus <laughs> crown tourney. <laughs> Anyway, um, but then it won't be an only court event so no. like, if, if i were driving the bus and i and i had the the uh if i were important enough to make those decisions i would be um breaking awards down and delegating to royal peers to barons and baronesses to uh prince and princesses to um you know people can meet in smaller groups in person and have that personal touch. Um, but I don't run the world, so it's not, that's not the way it's going. But I, I think that knows? would, what? Is it in who knows? Maybe we'll have a crown in October or something. Maybe. Maybe, maybe it won't be like everything in two days. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> but I, there's just such an immense amount of pressure. Like it's just getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And mm -hmm. uh, I don't envy our crown at all right now because it's 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 just on the like, other hand, when we finally get to go back and it's safe, like maybe we're all going to be in for like a 36 hour straight court. Like, who knows? Like, <laughs> never going to be in for that. <laughs> I'm not either, but I'm going <laughs> to. Oh, oh. Hey, court, that first 12th night, I just had no idea. And it was like court at night and then court all day. And then I went up to Tally's vigil and Amalric, who was a perfectly fine person, was like, you know what's really cool that people don't know what du the Dukes can do? They can have Ducal court. And I was like, I'm done. Well, what is this kingdom? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I'm courted out. Right. Love you guys though. Ontario is great, and I really, really enjoy being here. But that was a weird start. <laughs> I thought a four-hour court was really long. Yeah, the the court that that Rifkin got knighted at was, I think, hours. Yeah, it was a fourteen-hour court, yeah. or there were fourteen peerages. It was forever. It was forever. They, yeah. they didn't stop until it was dark. Oof. Yeah, like well into dark past dinner time. Anyway, yeah, we're totally it's off. More fun when you know yeah, the people yeah, sorry. involved. I totally took us off. Um, yeah. So, have we talked about everything you wanted to talk about? Is there anything that um, you'd like to talk about that we haven't? I don't know. I was just gonna answer questions. <laughs> oh, fine. Put all the pressure on us. <laughs> yeah. I made I made an axe hairpin. That is I'm really, really proud cool. of it. That's super cool. Oh, I know what we haven't done. Um, so you have a blog. Oh, yes. Um, and we should put that in the comments. <laughs> I don't have. So I will put that in the comments later because <laughs> I don't have it prepped to do that. Um, and then you also are uh, you have an Etsy shop now. Yes, uh, which I've glad people like stuff <laughs> that sounds weird i'm sorry that in the comments too yeah yeah so um when when we wrap up will you go back and put your etsy shop in the comments yes okay what is it so that people know uh it is idle bliss i-d-e-l-b-l-i-s-s -S, which means vain joy in old english oh cool because <laughs> And yeah. you make really cool pewter um, like uh, pilgrim badges, right? Yeah, I made little like ones that said vaccinated and uh, I've been making other stuff and it, it's it been like, I've been really enjoying the casting and it gives me an excuse <laughs> um, to do more of it, uh, which I appreciate. And I was and like, well, I have to buy a forge cause like now I've got the Etsy shop. So that makes total monetary sense yeah <laughs> and you've got uh gender pins on there as well yeah that give pronouns um and i'd like to do different styles the ones i have are like 15th century i think i forget exactly um but they're they're like little they look like little boutonnieres um and i would like to do other other time periods because 
I think it's important. And I also enjoy things that fit in with your persona. Um, and if I can do that for people, that's super awesome. <laughs> Cool. Well, thank you for doing this with us. Thank you. It was fun. It's good to see you both. I miss you. Yeah, we miss you too. Um, <clears throat> thanks for being our first uh, person back. <laughs> Helping thank you. Through uh, the foibles of trying to get going again. Um, next week, uh, we have the privilege of having Maneko with us. Uh, she is currently the crown princess of Aitenhill. Awesome. Pelican, um, badass fighter, artist. She does it all. Yep. Um, and we kind of have this month is, is uh, just full of women that do it all. Um, after her will be Rotrude, and then after her will be Raven. They are all super cool. Yeah, they, they, actually, they do all do it all. Yeah. Yeah, it's like kick-ass women's month. <laughs> it's my birthday month, so we're celebrating with kick-ass women. Yep. <laughs> That's totally appropriate. All right, well, thanks everyone for watching and hanging out with us, and uh, we'll see you next week. Any, do, you, do you have a... a um, I do not. Um, I, I need to schedule some more leveling ups. Um, I know we're going to do a block printing one and um, I'm going to reschedule Duke's Fen from Astoria on shoe covers for fighting. So um, there are a couple of things in the works. I just uh, work has been taking over my life lately yeah. um, in not a good way. Um, so I just haven't had the bandwidth to uh, reach out to people and schedule those. Well, I didn't mean to guilt you. I just, I just <laughs> want to make sure that. Uh... I don't feel guilted. I'm just being honest. Okay, good. I think that's good. All right, everybody. Thanks so much. And uh, I'm going to stop.